हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आई यूट्यूब चैनल पावर विद इन मेरा नाम आफ्रिति है एंड यू आर वाचिंग द फोर्थ सेशन ऑफ स्कॉलर्स कन्वेंशन आज हम लोग बात करने जा रहे हैं अबाउट हाउ टू परस्यू अ पीएचडी इन साइकोलॉजी फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली और इसके लिए हमें आज इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोवाइड करने के लिए हमारी जो गेस्ट है हर नेम इज मिस आफरीन फातिमा who herself is a student of phd in cognitive psychology from delhi university and she is also an educator under the udc net crash course of power within hamare paas aise kafi entrance related crash courses hain and if you want to avail any kind of those courses then please feel free to download our app and also our website without any further ado let's get started and i'll just add her to our stream Hi Miss Afreen how are you I'm good how are you Afriti I'm great I'm great so how are you feeling how's your day today Today in the anticipation of talking to you it went really <laughs> quickly and then the weather here is so good it's raining Okay that's nice so Miss Afreen sabse pehle main aapse request karungi ki aap apne bare mein thoda sa hamare viewers ko batae so that they know the person that they are talking to so over to you miss afreen uh, i am a phd student at delhi university i am doing my phd in cognitive psychology under the supervision of uh, professor nandita babu ma'am uh, delhi university north campus uh, faculty of arts and i am very passionate about psychology mental health yeah okay that's nice good to hear that uh, miss afreen तो जस्ट डाइविंग इन टू द कॉन्वर्सेशन आई लाइक टू नो फर्स्ट सबसे पहले मैं आपसे ये जानना चाहूंगी कि अभी आप एक पी एच डी साइकोलॉजी स्टूडेंट है सो हाउ हैज योर एक्सपीरियंस बीन सो फार सिंस डी ओ इज अ वेरी समथिंग इट्स नोन एज अ वेरी प्रेस्टिजियस इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड अ लॉट ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस ट्राई टू यू नो गेट इन टू द यूनिवर्सिटी सो सिंस यू आर अ पार्ट ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी हाउ हैज योर एक्सपीरियंस बीन इट्स बीन टू ईयर्स फाइव मंथ्स टू बी एग्जैक्ट and till now it's been amazing what can i say it's not easy but okay. i wouldn't say it's difficult either you get okay. to meet exceptional people you have amazing experiences so till now my psychology phd experience in du that's it's been amazing in totality let's see okay. there's still time for a change in perspective to that can happen <laughs> Yes, definitely, definitely. मैं इस समय में अपने व्यूअर्स को ये बताना चाहूंगी कि मिस आफरीन इज विलिंग टू टेक योर डाउट्स तो अगर आपके कोई भी क्वेश्चन है रिलेटेड टू पी एच डी इन साइकोलॉजी फ्रॉम डेली यूनिवर्सिटी एंड यू कैन ऑलवेज लेट अस नो इन द चैट बॉक्स आप हमें चैट बॉक्स में बता सकते हैं एंड बोथ ऑफ आस विल ट्राई आर लेवल बेस्ट टू आंसर दो क्वेश्चन मूविंग ऑन मिस आफरीन मैं आपसे जानना चाहूंगी अबाउट द एडमिशन प्रोसेस जब आपने एडमिशन लिया था इन डेली यूनिवर्सिटी how was it like so there are few things in this question first of all uh, you as a new candidate you register on the du portal right uh, basic uh, details you have to fill what's important about the form is that you fill in about your research experience any publications that you have done any um, uh, work experience so for me right out of masters i still had to give my sixth semester final examination it was a very uh, nerve wracking form to fill but yes they do ask you about also uh, the proposal that you want to do in your phd they ask you a little bit of details about that uh, research proposal okay uh, mm-hmm. and uh, then uh, when the so 2020 registration happened in june so it's mm-hmm. that time of the year so oh, candidates yes. should be ready who want to apply uh, mm-hmm. then so you are asking about the entire admission process uh, we then gave went and gave our entrance exams uh, entrance exams happened in june for us that time and then we uh, we were ranked according to our grades we were asked to come for the interview and by year end 2018 the admission process was over so okay. uh, yeah it it got a little late our interviews happened in october but uh, you have to be patient it is a long process definitely aur jab aapne admission ke liye apply kiya tha was there any eligibility criteria that you had to follow or had to cater to while applying for admission uh, yes so you have to have masters 
in um, either psychology, applied psychology, behavioral, uh, family okay. studies. You have to have masters with fifty five percent of marks. So that is the eligibility criteria for this, and this is the minimum requirement. All right. And is there also an entrance for admission? अगर एंट्री है तो कैसा सिलेबस था जो आपने देखा और यूजुअली कैसा सिलेबस Yes so to answer your first question there is an entrance exam which happens and uh, what's important to note here is that people who have mphil uh, who have uh, net or who have cleared any national eligibility exam they are mm-hmm. exempted from this uh, entrance test okay hmm those who don't have uh, these things uh, they just have given their masters they come in for the entrance test and they have to first appear for it in which there are uh, 50 mcq type questions okay and uh, in that 50 mcq type questions you are given 2 hours to complete it and okay. uh, so if i talk about the syllabus to answer your second question uh, 50% is research aptitude and methodology okay Mm-hmm. and other 50% is testing your uh, reasoning your mathematical skills and subject specific questions hmm mm-hmm. all right aur aapne agar ye entrance diya hai so we would like to know from you what was your routine preparation strategy if you could just let us know and give us any tips aapne kaise prepare kiya aur aap apne fellow aspirants ko kya advice denge uh for the uh, preparation of this entrance test you have to uh, first study for the ugc net exam hmm the syllabus is the same uh, like i said 50% of questions research aptitude based and 50% of questions that are psychology specific so if you are already aiming to clear your net exams uh, you are done with the entrance test now uh, what i would advise is don't just focus on giving phd entrance of let's say just d go for jamia's yes. entrance also and uh, so jamia's phd entrance happened a little earlier than du's phd entrance exam and mm-hmm. that exam was very difficult i mean there were 150 questions and 50 questions were uh, qualitative type i mean you have to write in your answers in that and other 100 were mcq based so when i went for that and my confidence was shaken that oh my god that's a really difficult paper mm. then i came back home and then i prepared uh, reimagined and recalculated everything and then get, went to give the du entrance so uh, that was my preparation uh, i uh, ugc net and uh, a few more exams of phd entrances ओके ओके मैं साफरीन हम लोग ने ऑलरेडी एंट्रेंस के बारे में हमने कवर कर लिया है बट काफी यूनिवर्सिटीज ऐसी भी होती हैं जो इंटरव्यूज भी लेती हैं सो इज डी यू वन ऑफ दो यूनिवर्सिटीज जो इंटरव्यू कंडक्ट करती हैं और कैसे क्वेश्चंस पूछे जाते हैं और हम लोग कैसे प्रिपेयर रह सकते हैं इन ऑर्डर टू यू नो डू वेल इन इन दी इंटरव्यू यस सो वंस यूर डन विद योर एंट्रेंस टेस्ट एंड you uh, all the top rank candidates are asked for the to come for the interview right uh, now in the interview uh, the ones who were exempted from the entrance test mphil and uh, net candidates who had national uh, level exam already cleared they were coming directly for the interview so interview is mandatory for okay. all uh, for all of them uh, yeah. you have to have a research proposal which you want to present Hmm. and uh, they ask you uh, they want to know whether the candidate can uh, do that research right they want to check the competency hmm. and uh, they also want to know uh, whether that kind of research can be undertaken in their uh, university so uh, those kind of questions uh, they ask me about my masters experience they ask me about uh, actually my uh, entrance test if i uh, talk about it my interview experience Uh, all the uh, faculty was there the whole team uh, was mm-hmm. there uh, and it was very nerve wracking but yes uh, it's all worth it at the end like you say uh, they ask you about these things only yeah and what are the total number of seats uh, that are there for phd psychology total number of seats for this course are 25 uh, however mm-hmm. this number it changes annually Uh, depending okay. on uh, how many supervisors are there 
how many yes. students each supervisor can take so that number can always change uh, but 25 is the number as of 2019 2020 ओके okay. अभी हम लोग ने ऑलरेडी पहले एडमिशन के प्रोसीजर में बात कर ली है कि जो यूपीसी नेट फुलफिल कर लेते हैं जो क्लियर कर लेते हैं दे आर एग्जेप्टेड फ्रॉम दी एंट्रेंस और इसके अलावा क्या कोई और प्रोविजंस या ग्रांट्स होते हैं फॉर द प्रोफेशनल्स और स्टूडेंट्स हु हैव क्लियर्ड द यूजीसी नेट प्रोविजंस की बात करें तो uh, एक नॉन नेट फेलोशिप होती है व्हिच अ स्टूडेंट कैन अवेल फ्रॉम द यूनिवर्सिटी Uh, if you don't have net right uh, and okay. even if you have net you avail this non net fellowship okay. other than if you want to increase because this can uh, cover your expenses of uh, stationery only uh, not much is given if you want to increase your uh, this thing your funding you apply for external uh, grants external okay. grants may you have options like iccsr and then uh, there is uh, dipr uh, mm. there is ncert uh, maulana azad fellowship is there depending on if you are a minority uh, belong to minority group uh, but jrf if you can clear that exam and get jrf uh, because this provision that you are getting is not just money it this also dictates your phd career definitely hmm ओके okay. और अभी आप ऑलरेडी जैसे पीएचडी परस्यू कर रहे हैं तो फिर कैसा कोर्स स्ट्रक्चर है दैट यू आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू फॉलो थ्रू आउट दिस पीएचडी प्रोग्राम सो आफ्रिति नाउ देयर आर सिक्स पॉइंट्स अंडर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन स्टार्टिंग विद द कोर्स वर्क एंड देयर इज अ कोर्स वर्क व्हिच द स्टूडेंट हैज टू सिट इन गिव द एग्जाम ऑफ एंड क्लियर विद 55% ऑफ मार्क्स now this course work has this has the syllabus which is divided into two parts paper 1 hmm. and paper 2 paper 1 okay. is research perspectives and a uh, paper 2 is the uh, tr- general traditions of research hmm so this course work is supposed to go on these course work classes are supposed to go on for 6 months and hmm. then you uh, they take your exam for another 6 okay. months you are supposed to study under your supervisor any subject of your choice an advanced level of study mm-hmm. so that is the first part of it then coming to the second part you have uh, a tentative title of the phd that you have to uh, decide on within the first year okay then uh coming to the so this was the second part third part is every 6 months or so there is a committee called rac which is the research advisory committee and they uh, look at your work they give certain feedbacks and comments on how uh, the direction can be and they give you uh, these uh, constructive uh, changes that you can make in your work okay all right then there is uh, finally the scholar they present their phd work in a pre phd presentation which is okay. attended by all the faculty members all the students that are uh, there doing masters all the research scholars that there are in the university this okay. pre phd presentation is a sort of defense hmm. Hmm. once you are done with defending your topic you have now 6 months hmm. to submit your thesis hmm. so th- coming to the last part of the answer now you come to the phd viva which is taken by an external examiner hmm. okay. uh, recently some changes have been made uh, in there is a foreign uh, external examiner which is a part of the viva team acha so uh, mm-hmm. yes this is the final thing the phd viva okay thank you miss afreen for that detailed explanation moving on main aapse janna chahungi ki kya delhi university sirf ek generalized degree deta hai jo hum kehte hain phd psychology ya fir hum specializations kar sakte hain in this program yes so uh, there are certain areas of research that uh, delhi university offers uh, like dyslexia uh, and uh, schizophrenia that you can find on the uh, portal on the website right those few topics that are written there but Anji. it's not like that uh, the supervisors that are present 
and the mm-hmm. work that they have done in various different fields right in ve- every uh, faculty member is part of one or the other uh, specialized in one or the other field of psychology so okay. whoever you want to study under has to have certain uh, expertise in the field of psychology and then you can uh, choose clinical psychology if you want to organizational psychology if you want to do organizational psychology your supervisor should be uh, an expert in that field and also you should also have some certain amount of knowledge and sources that you can avail yeah okay coming to the research part of phd so research is a very extensive thing in the whole course of your phd program i'd like to know from you and this is also a viewers question how can one write a good research proposal since that's a very very crucial part of our phd process so how can one write a good research proposal is there any format that one can follow yeah what are some of the things that one can keep in mind a uh, research proposal uh, like i said the submission of it is mandatory right when you come in for the interview you bring the research proposal with you and mm. uh, they look at that research proposal and they can ask you questions from that now mm. how do you answer or how do you write this research proposal there is mm. a general guidelines that you can follow and uh, this general guidelines apply at every place right starting with an abstract you mm-hmm. have to write a 300 word abstract mm-hmm. and then you have to write an introduction which is mm-hmm. the uh, three which is starting your research proposal the research proposal can be about 3000 words okay the abstract is done with 300 words uh, you are starting with your introduction and here you have all your literature that you have reviewed right mm-hmm. and a uh, a lot of epistemological when we talk about these ontological paradigms of psychology right here mm-hmm. it is when you about your topic will be mentioning what do you know and what is the nature of reality and what is the knowledge that you're going to seek so mm-hmm. that is the introduction mm-hmm. then you come to uh, like i said review of literature is a part of it then you come to uh, your methodology section which is the most important and in methodology uh, before that you have your objectives and aims of research hypothesis are to be written in which you tell the relationship between the variables right and uh, yes after objectives after abstract intro objectives you come to methodology which is the important part and uh, you don't have to mention much about how you're going to analyze the data but okay. uh, ex- depending upon what can be the expected outcomes you can write a little bit about the data analysis strategies also and okay. you end with the references so that is the general uh, research proposal guidelines other than okay. that you can find anywhere you can find how to like what what steps to follow hmm bilkul abhi hum log ne baat kar li about the research proposal and now that you have entered a phd program you are expected to conduct a research so i'd like to know from ki how has your university helped you in conducting a research uh, a lot of help is given in terms of like i said uh, you attend pre phd presentations you get okay. aware about the kind of work that they expect you to do right the uh, the quality of work that is there in the university the students the scholars are already doing and okay. when the faculty team they sit there and they answer those questions and they put up comments on that pre phd presentation of this fellow who's about to in 6 months submit their thesis so as a fresher you get to understand the uh, framework right and uh, the help that university can give you uh, there are plenty but it is you upon you what what sort of opportunity you can grasp hey okay, bilkul for for delhi university uh, like you're aware of uh, the faculty is just exceptionally brilliant right you can talk to the professors there you can arrange meetings and discuss your research with these uh, with these people who have done so much work 
Hmm. So hmm. Uh, that opportunity is with you from the university, and then uh, there is the uh, financial assistance that they are giving you through the right. fellowship that you are availing. Hmm. Uh, but you have to understand that this this work, uh, yes, university can give you all of these pro, uh, pro help and everything, but this the nature of work of PhD is very independent, hmm. and you have to uh, guide your own knowledge. and you have to uh, work on a domain which you are interested and passionate in for a long period of time right so uh, you have to search for help and you have to uh, have that drive for knowledge बिल्कुल वी हैव अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम अ व्यूअर एंड आई थिंक वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड दिस एंड दे आर आस्किंग अबाउट द दैट will jrf be an added advantage for phd admissions we have already talked about this so i request the viewer ki aap hamari video ko thoda sa pehle karke dekh le to aapko hamare provisions jo jrf students ko milte hain wo aapko pata chal jayenge moving on uh, miss afreen i'd like to know from you ki ek research jab hum conduct karte hain to supervisor ka jo hame guide karte hain unka kitna important role rehta hai while we are doing a research uh now i cannot stress the importance of this question right supervisor uh the do your research choose okay. wisely because mm. uh, the supervisor is the one who will be uh, giving you the direction who will be uh, a very strong source of motivation okay. for your phd uh, okay. and i have seen uh, so many pre phd presentations the supervisor were not uh, as active and that completely shows in the work hmm okay. so uh, the importance of supervisor is vital because they don't just are there for like giving you comments and constructive feedback on what to do and what not to do but also uh, that sort of figure behind you with that amount of knowledge uh, hmm. that is always it it dictates it determines how nice your phd is going to be thank you okay or uh, i'd uh, like to know from you your research experience since you are conducting a research if you could just tell us a few tips koi aisa uh, experience jo aap hame share karna chahte hain koi aisi jo we can avoid while we are pursuing a phd kaise topic choose karte hain koi aisi tip hai so over to you. uh so first of all my research experience i am doing a uh, research in pragmatic skills of uh, early childhood uh, children so pragmatic skills mein i am uh, going to study social communication skills now okay. uh, my uh, based on my uh, work till now on cognitive psychology and i also have theory of mind as an aspect in this particular work uh, what i have learned is that by asking very simple mundane questions a research a researcher can tap into very delicate and very complicated things mm -hmm. so that is one thing that i have noticed and uh, you asked whether there are some things that uh, that are to be avoided that i will uh, answer later for uh, for my <laughs> research experience yeah uh, for my research experience uh, i i'll say it's it's been a very uh, learning experience till now because in my masters i was not too much into research as i am now reading so many research papers and everything i am much more, more aware and yeah okay okay mera last question hai aap se my last question to you is that there are a lot of people who like to work while they are pursuing a phd because of certain circumstances or they just value experiential knowledge a little bit more so can one work while pursuing a phd delhi university uh yes and no uh okay. yes because uh, you are allowed to you are allowed to work uh, and you can you should uh, choose a field in which which helps you to uh, do your topic in a better way so it increases your learning experience uh, no because a phd requires a lot of dedication and a lot of hard work it is an original piece of research it is uh, something unique which you are coming out with and uh, you do uh, first you find the topic you do data analysis 
and isn't that uh, enough work i mean you should be sincere about your phd and rather than extending it to 5 years 3 years uh, you should uh, focus on uh, uh, completing it in 3 years right so yeah. that is something uh, which i would suggest that uh, with integrity and with uh, sincerity do your phd work uh, but those who uh, those who want some it's just the circumstances that they want to work uh, mm. it is important to understand that what phase of research you are in if you have mm. collected your data you have done some of your analysis also you can go about doing a, a job okay okay uh, and now i'd like to give the floor to you miss afreen if there is any piece of advice or anything that you want to tell us ki hame avoid karna chahiye jo abhi aapne kaha so if there's anything you want to share yeah yeah uh, so i mentioned that uh, i wanted to point out three don'ts uh, that are important first don't is uh, you don't take feedback personally bilkul uh the work that you are presenting if there is a feedback on that don't take it uh, personally uh don't wait for people to tell you what to do in your phd mm. and finally uh you don't aim for perfection you perfectionism has no place in research so mm. uh, according to uh, my knowledge these are the three things that are there okay Thank you, Miss Afreen. With this, we come to an end of today's episode. On behalf of the whole Power Within team, I'd like to extend a very warm and a very big thank you to Miss Afreen that you gave us your time. आपने हमारी invitation को accept किया and you uh, came to be a part of Scholars Convention. So thank you, Miss Afreen, for giving us your time. Thank you for having me, Afriti. With this we come to an end of today's episode of Scholars Convention please like share and subscribe to our YouTube channel Power Within agar aapke paas koi bhi recommendations hain for our YouTube channel please let us know in the comments down below with this we come to an end and please like share and subscribe and share it with your friends so that all of us find the one stop solution for all psychology aspirants which is Power Within thank you miss Afreen again for giving us your time